Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time once again for Closing the Wealth Gap. The one show, maybe the only show that shows you how to close the wealth gap in your own life with the man who's done it for many, our wealth coach himself, Tyrone French. Hey, Tyrone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Closing the Wealth Gap. I'm your host, Tyrone French. I want to thank you for tuning in. And this is the start of a new season. I appreciate everybody for coming and listening, and hopefully we're going to bring you the type of content uh, that you can appreciate. And actually, if you have any questions, I want you to go ahead and shoot me an email, tyrone at tyronefrench.com. But especially, what I want you to do is download my free mobile app. I put emphasis on free. All you have to do is go to tyronefrench.coach. If you don't want to do that, just text Tyrone French to 36260. Tyrone French to 36260. And basically, you're going to have the information in the palm of your hand as far as uh, newsletters, blogs, calculators. Uh, I give you a world class financial plan, which is absolutely free of charge. So, again, um, it's free. I can't I can't overemphasize the point that I just like that word free because I just price it to whereas people wouldn't have any excuse to getting this information so that they can find themselves with uh, the financial independence uh, that they deserve. Now, that being said, without further ado, I'm going to bring in my good friend, Mr. Paul Roberts. How are you doing, Paul? I am so waiting to hear. This is a part two. If you haven't heard the part one, you guys have a warm friendship with your guest here today. And we got a great response to it, and you brought him back. I'm glad you guys could make it back for a part two. Well, we got Anthony Dunn in the studio. And it's Anthony Dunn, United States Navy, retired. And every time I say that, his face just lights up. (laughs) (laughs) But we had such a great conversation, and we just couldn't let him leave the studio because there was more to talk about. And before, I mean, once we ended the show, the comments started coming in about the conversation. And so uh, we're just going to go ahead and keep it. Keep it going. So, Mr. Dunn, how you doing, sir? I am doing great, Mr. French. All right. <laughs> and thank you for sticking with us, man. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to do it. You but, know what amazes me is I'm sitting here with not just two vets, but two men that have what I don't have, multiple sources of income. That's why you're so relaxed and smiling. We're all panicking, saying, oh, my God, the bad news is I'm going to live to be 90. Is that the good news or the bad news? <laughs> the bad news is that I'm going to live to be 90. Yeah, right. Huh. Yeah, and there's a fear of a lot of people just running out of money. Absolutely, me included. Yeah, and again, it doesn't have to be that way. We, Tony and I, we position ourselves to where we joined the military when we were young guys. Yes, and, you know, some of it, you know, we knew, but some of it we didn't know uh, as far as, like, the benefits on the back end. And that's what we're going to talk about today as far as some of those benefits on the back end. And let's talk about our association based on, because uh, we got this group and a group of veterans that come together. And it's like a brotherhood. And I want you to share how we how we put that group together, Tony. Well, it, due to the fact that uh, social media actually brought us together. Uh, one guy called me one day from Have We Served, and another guy called, and someone saw me on Facebook. And before you know it, within, uh, I would say, seven months, we were able to put that core group together. And at the end of that seven months, uh, we decided that we would get together and have a reunion. And our initial reunion was held in Long Beach, California. Yes. And it was amazing because, you know, of course, we aged. It was, that was uh, almost 40 years ago. Right. We were young men then. You know, we were old fellas now, you know. <laughs> went through life good, bad, and indifferent. But it was great to see one another. But the, yes. but the main thing about it was not everyone retired from the Navy. Right. You had some folks that did. Most didn't. You had a few folks, and not a month, not a lot at all, that were service connected. And what I'm referring to as service connected is any type of illness or injury that you sustained while you were in service. You're entitled to compensation, right? Uh, medical compensation and monetary comp- comp- uh, compensation. Yes. So. 
one thing led to another and we were letting people know, hey, you were exposed to this or you did that or you witnessed this or witnessed that. You're entitled to the VA helping you out, giving right. you a pension. Right. Now, I remember we were, at, we were um, in a hotel room. Correct. And we we're having a conversation, and it was a couple of people in there in particular. One of our one person was our good friend, may he rest in peace, David Bibbs. Yes. Who was had a disability rating and was receiving compensation. Uh, there was another gentleman there, and I'm, I'm not going to get into the names and stuff, but another gentleman there who was actually rated with a hundred percent disability compensation rating. Right. And so the majority of the people there. Um, were not in the system and were not receiving those benefits and that compensation, um, myself included. And over the years, again, we're coming together and we're fellowshipping and having a good time. And I resisted getting the VA compensation. And it was almost like um, having a bank account that was full of money that I had access to but I just wasn't tapping into. And when I say money, I want savings account. I mean with, with compensation, with um, well, actually dollars, tax-free dollars, and uh, benefits. So, Can I jump in there and just sure. ask a question? So you hit the nail right on the head, right at the beginning here. This stuff exists, and it isn't just that you don't know about it. There's a resistance to it. I don't know. Yes. I've heard this before in other shows here. Uh, is it the tough veteran? Hey, I'm too tough. Uh, that's for, you know, people that are really seriously injured. Not me. I, I can gut it out. I don't need it. I, you know, whatever. Or is it something else? Explain let, that to everybody. Let me give you my opinion. Yeah. Um, I didn't lose a limb. Right. I, I didn't lose an eye. Right. I didn't, um, I, I wasn't in a wheelchair. I wasn't, my body wasn't being eaten up by stage four cancer. Yeah. So I thought those benefits applied for the other veterans who didn't have it so well when when so it, it wasn't it, it took a, a couple of people from the group and also uh, uh, a, a force master chief petty officer to literally I went to actually went to boot camp with this guy Christopher Penn to literally shake me and say French it's not about you as far as just the benefits in your situation he said, what you need is that designation, because now what it does is opens you up to where now you can start receiving government contracts. Mm-hmm. As a business owner, that's what that, that that was my aha moment. But then once I got into and I, I filed for the benefits, I realized that trauma was something that a lot of veterans have gone through in the military. Uh, they've been exposed to certain Chemicals and situations um, that, again, that they're entitled to these benefits that they just won't. Are these things like Agent Orange? That's the only one I hear about. Well, I tell you what, Dunn, jump in here. Well, you tell me, tell us your your situation. Plain and simple, Um, I suffered a heart attack when I was in the reserves, um, and I claimed it after I got out of the Navy or after I retired. Um, I was denied. I claimed again, I was denied, I claimed again, and then something miraculously happened for me in my favor. President Biden signed into the the law, the PAC Act. Yes. And if you were exposed to certain toxins, burn pits, uh, herbicides like Agent Orange, and you could prove that you were in that area, then you were considered presumptive, which is right. what happened to me. Uh, I was stationed on Guam, and unknowing to me and a lot of my other fellow servicemen, we were exposed to Agent Orange. Yes. In and Guam. See, that, in I, was, Guam. I thought Guam. you had to be in jungle or in country or no, something. No, 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 no. There were certain, there were different places uh, throughout the world that Agent Orange was used and stored. But anyway. Stored. See, that, that's the opposite that's word. The key. It was yeah. stored. Yes. yes. And it leaked and there whatever, like anything that's stored. Talk about these burn pit issues here because that's what I hear about and I don't understand. I know it was a personal issue for President Biden because he lost his son who was serving, who was his yeah, two Bo sons. Biden. Yeah, Bo well, Biden. he had two sons, kind of like Cain and Abel. One was the good son, one was the troubled son. And the good son, who was uh, rose to become an attorney general in Delaware, and thought, "Wow, his path is open." Developed was it brain cancer. I think it was brain cancer. Yes, got. brain cancer. And they, I don't know if they were definitively proved it, but he was exposed to all these. 
burn pits where they're burning all this stuff outside of the military camps or in the military camps. Talk about that. On the that. camps. Well, basically, uh, what a burn pit is is a designated area where in, throughout the battlefield you have waste products. Right. You know, ammunition that's spent, cases and such, paints, whatever. And it's thrown into this area and it is burned. You can't throw it away. You can't, you can't leave it there away. laying all over the place so like you litter. Get rid, yeah. You get rid of it by burning it. And unfortunately, those fumes are toxic. Oh. And they happen just happen to be in the area where military personnel are. Yeah. And it can lead to things like heart attacks or brain cancers or other things that you wouldn't... You wouldn't various various cancers. Yeah, various you wouldn't cancers. immediately say, that's why I got this. Because uh, it maybe came later, but, but it, there's might be asbestos in the what kind? I can't imagine what goes into the stuff that they burn. But that's why they have a presumptive claim. Yeah, because be, they they check your service record and they can verify and confirm that you were actually in that area in this particular time, which allows you to not only file for that benefit, but you have the evidence to so that now you know they they're going to compensate you because uh, you proved your claim. I think about the other case that in my lifetime came out of nowhere and took years to prove was asbestos in ships you know they used it as fire retardant like they did in homes and other things like right. that and the people who worked in these ships or worked on these ships in many cases were exposed to asbestos because partly they didn't know partly didn't take good enough caution and then it took them years to prove because asbestos takes 20 years to to manifest itself one little exposure can lead to a lifetime of cancers and problems, but it doesn't happen the next day or the next year. Right. Right. And so sometimes you say, well, me, how do you know it was from this? It could have been from lots of things. And they had to go back and say, probably from this. Well, here's, here's the problem that a lot of veterans have. When they were on active duty, they didn't go to sick call or they didn't, yeah. go, to, they didn't go to medical or they weren't treated for certain exactly. things. Exactly. And so once you get out of the military, it's like now, well, you know, we don't have a we don't have a record. Sick, yeah. yeah, we don't have a record of it. And is that just because you're supposed to suck it up and be tough and all these things here? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the mindset. You know, you know, put put some duct tape on it. You broke your arm. Yeah, you know, all right. put, put some duct tape. On it, go <laughs> let's back go. To yeah, let's go. And it's hoorah. And it's like you know, the person with the most duct tape is the, is the most you know hoorah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's He's the person, our hero. Then that's the person that gets the promotions, and that's the person that's you know pretty much the cut the shot caller but then when they get out of the military they got a lot of issues a lot of problems but no tr no proof that they suffered no any of these things so that's why some of those claims the military stepped in and said well some of these things are presumptive I meaning we're going to presume or assume um that this happened to you yes and 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 it may be things you're exposed to like we're talking about what about other things? Like, you guys worked on jets. I know you wear big headphones, but doesn't that affect your... Yes. That, that's, that's got to be something to your body. You're hearing your somebody here. You're these giant jets blowing off well, over I, your head, around you, and all this stuff hey, here. Tony, jump in here, man, because I want you to tell a story about... one. Of, I don't want you to go into all the details, but there was a you there was a claim that was submitted by you just based on a horror story. Uh, I want you to share that story. Now, again, you don't have to be all, all graphic, but I want the audience to understand that when you go into the military and you take that oath to defend it, the United States Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestics, that's a death oath. Because it's a death oath, oh yeah. My. Because again, to the death, yeah, right. Yeah, because you, you, you that's you're. You're the walking dead until you prove otherwise. <laughs> oh, my God. I never heard of it that well, way. Again, tell the this, tell this story about Yikes. your situation. Well, plain and simple, uh, I suffer from PTSD. and I Post-traumatic stress disorder. Correct. And uh, I witnessed an event when I was at sea years ago. Unfortunately, this young man uh, was uh, ingested by an aircraft on the flight deck. The aircraft was, he was sucked into the sucked aircraft. Into the exactly, he was a mechanic, and he just forgot where he was at, at the wrong time, and it uh, drew him in, and it killed him. And it was a horrifying event. And it uh, didn't kill him in a polite way, probably a no, very dramatic, no, messy very, way. Here. Very graphic, very right. ugly. Anyway, so we continued flight offs for another fifteen minutes, and then after it was all done, uh, the skipper came over to one MC and announced that we lost a shipmate. So before that aircraft was taken below in the hangar deck to be worked on, i.e. remove the engine and put that engine with the human remains that were left in the can, everyone was allowed to, on the flight deck to come see it. And I walked up on it, and it was the first time I ever seen death like that. 
and it, it shook me up. But you know, I, I walked it off. It's like okay, yeah, suck it up. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm aware of the dangers on the flight deck. Yet I love the action yes. and what I did. So I suppressed those feelings, but they resurfaced. And they would resurface, but I'd push them back down and resurface, and I'm pushing back down. Until one day in an examination, examination, uh, my doctor had noticed something about me. He asked me some hard questions, and I answered them. And he pretty much told me, you know, you're suffering from PTSD, and I think you need to be treated for it. Right, right. And does this, I don't want to tell me if I go too far here, but. You were sharing some stories of some guys that had died that literally took their own lives along the way here. Does this surface in a way that somehow comes back to haunt you? You can't just shake it off anymore. You can't suck it up. And and it can lead to disaster. Well, let me tell you, the, 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 for me, and again, a lot of, a lot of veterans that I, that I know, you get to the point where you, be, you begin to avoid things. It's like a, avoidance syndrome, meaning that you might stay in your house. You don't want to be around friends. You don't want to be around family. Um, you, you get to the point where you start having dreams, and those dreams turn into nightmares. And you wake up, and you're reliving these things over and over and over again. And so uh, we got a very good friend, a mutual friend, um, uh, D- Del Jackson. Yes. You know, call him Axon Jackson. Yeah. But tell, just, just briefly, tell that story. Axon Jackson at work one day uh, discovered one of our shipmates uh, hanging from uh, an overhead pipe. Oh, my God. The gentleman in question, he uh, left his shop and told everybody, well, I'll see you later, and he just left. He was gone for a few hours, you know, and like I said, uh, during the course of the day, you're not really knowing where is this guy at. So Mr. Jackson, he was on his way to the tool crib. That's a place where we get tools. Right. And he saw uh, a pair of legs hanging in the air in one of the closed spaces, just enough where you could see something. And it startled him. He broke the door down, and then that's when he discovered our shipmate. Right. So this guy says to nobody, I'm suffering. He just tries to suck it up and says, see you later. And knowing probably in his mind, you're not going to see me later. I'm go- I'm going to end it right now. Well, see, Paul, that's the thing about it. Uh, and I found this out as, later on when I became a first class petty officer. You you really don't know what's going on in the minds right. of the sailors exactly. that you work with that are over you or the ones that you're responsible to. And I made it a point whenever I had people in I was in charge of. I'd ask him, how are you doing today? Yes, yes. That's a common theme in the military, Paul. The, the, the check on your shipmates. How are you doing? How are you doing, how are you doing today? today? How are you doing today? Yeah. Not, not yesterday, not tomorrow, right now, in the present. How are you doing today? And it may seem like a small little, you know, nuanced conversation that has no meaning. But if you're going through something and somebody asks you, how are you doing today? And they see the response, or they see the reaction. They know right then and there. Spend some time with this person. Is that when you have to prove to your shipmates that you're not the Walking Dead anymore? Here, you're not the potential. You know, you, you, that's a dramatic statement. When you sign up, we're the Walking Dead unless you prove otherwise. I, I got to prove I'm alive every day here because well, well, I'm putting myself in that kind of harm's way. Paul, I can remember being on the USS Midway, and we had an F4 um, photo bird. Was was a spy plane. It was it would take pictures right uh in the in the nose of the, of the aircraft well for some reason the nose gear wouldn't come down and so they got like they have safeguards whereas you know if it doesn't come down with the hydraulics they have a, like a, a a bottle blow down bottle a blow down bottle to, you know to try to force it down well it just wouldn't come down so we had to rig the barricade and so you know you got this plane coming down uh on the flight deck at a at a certain speed that you got this barricade that you got a rig a high speed high speed and so you're man paul you're 19 20 21 years old yeah. you're not thinking about dying that's the furthest thing from your mind it's like we got a rig that barricade to stop this aircraft and this guy from dying and this that yeah as far as you know because they're not going to they're not going to ditch the the pictures they're not going to ditch this equipment it was too valuable right so they're bringing it back on the on the ship so the only thing we can do is rig the barricade. And again, we're in our minds, we're thinking best case scenario. We're not thinking about the plane blowing up on the deck 
and people being blown to, you know, to bits. But that's what we did. And we did it with pride. We did it with, with, with style and grace. And everybody knew their job. And you weren't on that flight deck. You, you, you had to qualify to be on the flight deck. And if you were hesitant or if you were fearful or if you, didn't, you weren't sure about yourself, you didn't go on that flight deck. So I've never had to put myself in that kind of situation and figure out how I'm going to face those things day after day. Does it lead to, if you don't have an obvious problem, veterans, like you say, say, I, I, I'm, I'm going to feel bad, I'm going to feel weak, I'm going to feel wrong to somehow claim these things because I didn't lose a hand or an arm or a leg or there's guys much worse than me here. And it's like, it's not like you're taking money away from them. There is money, the, the, the country is asking you to do something we can't do. And, and has provided services to support and help and sustain you, A lot of it is guilt. That's what I'm kind of getting yeah, at. Yeah, a lot of it is say. guilt because it didn't happen to you. It happened to somebody else, so therefore you don't deserve it. But I'm, I'm right. going to tell you a story. Right. Um, I guess that's what I was getting at. Yeah. I don't know how to say it. But people, <laughs> people that know me know that my background is financial services and insurance. Right. And one of the things I make sure that I do, I always make sure that people change and update their beneficiary statements. Make the, and again, that was a pet peeve of mine, not knowing. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story. I was on the USS Ranger, and we had a friend of our mutual friend. Terry, his name was Terry Smith. And Terry was going up on one of the maintenance flights with the, with the air crew. And I think it was like nine people on the plane. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. So I, uh, before, before Terry leaves, again, we're on the, we're on the same deck. We're on the, uh, the detachment, and we're having conversations. And Terry had a, a fiancé back in Detroit. And they were, they were going to get married. So before you go on the detachment, you basically you sign, you make sure that your affairs are in order. You get your will together and everything. But in this particular incidence, uh, instance, uh, Cherry decided to change his beneficiary from his mother to his fiance, knowing that when he got back to Detroit, they were going to get married. Uh, lo and behold, um, I have two pictures of Terry. One the night before, and right before. He got on that plane. I said, hey, Terry, he turned around. I took a picture of him. And that was the last time we ever saw Terry. Wow. The, 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 the plane crashed. It disintegrated. Disintegrated in the air. And the reason we know that because they had one survivor. One survivor. His name was Bob Huff. And when Huff came back to the, to the ship, the, the person that got on that plane and the person that came back was two totally different people. And to see somebody in a, in a vegetated or a zombie state, he was walking around, um, but he wasn't there. And again, as a 19-year-old, 19, 20-year-old 19, kid, you're observing all this stuff, but then all of a sudden you're pushing it out your mind. It's like you're not worried about it. You're not thinking about it. But lo, again, lo and behold... I had no idea that I made that connection as a life insurance agent to make sure that people had their beneficiary statements updated. It wasn't until I was speaking to a psychologist that explained to me, well, maybe this is why you're doing it. And then I formed the connection. Yeah, maybe that's why this is so important. And I formed the That's why it was so important because of the experience. And again, the, the, the dreams that I had of Terry in that incident... Um, the, you relive it and relive it and relive it, and to see the same person over and over and over again, um, knowing that this person is never going to come back, and then you wake up, and now you got to deal with the reality. But again, let me tell you the, the flip side of the story. Uh, the girl who was he, his fiance at the time, she was about 19, 20 years old. The mother didn't get the money, <laughs> so the 19 year old. Uh, girl did exactly what a 19 year old would do when they got that hundreds of thousands of dollars she went on a shopping spree and so the mother called the command because it's like she didn't think it was fair that this young girl got this money and she's the mother and they had to tell her there's nothing we can do about it because she's the beneficiary and i didn't know about contract law at the time but i do understand now that the life insurance policy is a contract and based on that contract when he signed that the, the she was the beneficiary, there was nothing that they could do. They had to uphold the contract. So last couple of minutes, you've done some powerful stuff here. There almost should be a part three sometime about this. Um, it isn't just that the VA maybe doesn't tell people enough about this. That's part of it. And it isn't just enough that they're not aware of it, which is on everybody. But 
that there's a resistance to even going down this path because maybe it opens the door, maybe it provokes new feelings, maybe it's uh, talk about that a little bit, uh, well, Tony. To Dunn t- here, t- 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 Tony. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, Do I call him Mister Dunn here? Or Commander <laughs> yes, Dunn yeah. You or, call him, call or, him Mr. Or A-V-D-D Dunn. Or, I, so you all have these <laughs> designations. I don't know what it is. Just don't I, call me late for dinner. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. Uh, it's not an easy. Uh, as one, two, three, yeah. as far as getting obtaining your VA benefits. Now you fill out the paperwork accordingly, and sometimes you can go through a VSO to help you out, and you submit it, and then you have to wait, and then they give their findings, and they send you to a CMP exam, and, and maybe so they forth. say no, or they have yes, some qualifications. At, at or something. times, at times you are denied, right. but you feel that you earned these benefits. You continue. You you fight. You fight. You fight until you win your case. Plain and simple. Because you guys did earn something. That's why we all say thank you for your service. And then we think, well, okay, I cover. I checked that box here. But you did. It's more than a thank. The country has literally set aside money because you guys have put yourselves at risk in a way that most of us can't imagine. Well, not only that, but uh, it's it's it, they they do it. Because they understand the sacrifice, the sacrifices yeah. that were made. Yeah. And it's not just to the veteran, but it's to the family as well. Absolutely. Exactly. To the families as well. So I'm going to put myself in a scenario, whereas when I first filed, uh, it took me two years to receive my compensation and receive my benefits. It was a two-year process. And I can remember talking to this man right here that's sitting across from me telling right. me, I was, I was like, man, Dan, it's not worth it. And he, what would you say? What would you tell me? I told you, yes, it is. And I had not been awarded at that point in time. It took me six years, wow. six years to finally be rated. So how many people just give up along the way? <laughs> many, many. Thousands, <laughs> thousands, hundreds of thousands. You know, in my estimate, that would just give up and just quit. But but the, what I, the message that I would tell people today is is if you're entitled to these benefits, don't quit. Just you know get it. Make sure that you got a good relationship with your VSO, which is, which is a veteran service uh, organization or officer, and just make sure that you have evidence. Get the evidence, and don't feel bad because this is something you earned. I'd like to add to that. A VSO helps, but you can do this on your own. True. You just take true. you just fill out the paperwork. And uh, there are two manuals or references that you should use. The 38 CFR, which is regulations that the VA uses to rate you and deny you yes. on all of your injuries or illnesses and the M21 manual. Yes. Yes. And why do they all have such goofy names? The M thirty sixteen dash four subparagraph three thing. Why can't it just be the acronyms for the military? <laughs> just the way it is. Oh. But again, Paul, you, you can't know what you don't know. Yeah. And so that's where the brotherhood comes in, or that's where like service organizations come in, to or podcasts come like together, this, or right. podcasts like this to, that's willing to educate and inform people and tell people. You know, to me, one of the most important documents that you're ever going to have in this process is an intent to file. Would you agree, Dan? Correct. Have your intent to file. All that means is that you can you can you can file this document, this in, intent to file, and then you have twelve months to make up your mind whether or not you want to complete the process or put your evidence together. And what they'll do is once you file that claim, they'll go back to the date of that intent to file. And if you're entitled to back pay, they're going to pay you based on uh, the date of that intent to file. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Let me give you one other quick story. Maybe we'll wrap this up somewhere around this. We had a, uh, another veteran on another show here. And it was a show that deals with pancreatic cancer, horrible disease. And a woman that hosts the show has been fortunate to survive for 20 years. So she brings in survivors and have these hard conversations about what can you expect? How, you know, what's life like with this disease? What's death like with this disease? So she had a veteran come in. And he said, you know, my biggest problem once I got this, and it wasn't just establishing how he got it or whatever. It was the fact that he said, I was taught to be self-sufficient. Right. I don't need anybody's help. I'm out in combat. I got to think on my own. I, I rely on my buddies and my friends and my unit and everybody got my back. But I'm there to, to figure it out and go forward. I don't need. And he said, it took me a long time to say, I need help. Yeah. Because I was taught, you don't need help. Right. Hey, Figure it I, out yourself. I tell you what, Paul, uh, we're going to give Mr. Dunn 
uh, the floor. You yes. know, I, want you, I want you to take the last few minutes and just share share what's on your heart. Share with what's on your mind as far as uh, your journey in helping veterans and what you would do differently based on what you know now. Well, what I would do differently is I would have made sure that anything that occurred to me in the military before I retired was documented. Yes. First and foremost. Yes. All right. Now, with that being said, in the course of my day, I do come across other veterans. And we get to talking, and the first thing I'll say to them, are you service-connected? Some, or most would tell me yes, and I'd shake their hand, I'm happy for you. But some most say said no. no. Right. And I would ask them, first and foremost, did anything happen to you while you were in the military? And they said yes. Okay. What you need to do is go to the VA and set yourself up for success. Yes. You need to file a claim. You have bad hearing. You have back pain. Your, your respiratory is, a system isn't right. You need to go get compensated by the VA for that because you earned that. Right. Right. Plain and simple. Yeah, I, I'm going to jump in here because of what you said, and I'm just going to kind of elaborate on, on that same thread. We got a good friend, mutual friend. I'm going to mention his name. His name is Charlie Dixon. Oh, yeah. And Charlie Dixon, it he procrastinated. He put it off. He put it off, put it off as far as filing for his claims. Now, here's the thing. He served with us in VQ1. He was around the Agent Orange. He was around. He suffered PTSD. He went from job to job. He couldn't maintain a job. So he had highs and lows. So he was a poster child for VA benefits. Because of our association, because of our group, he ended up finally going in and applying for his benefits. He got his uh, VA card. Uh, he got his physical done. And based on that physical, they found that he had a heart defect. Now, based on his uh, the, the treatment plan that he was going to go through, uh, he was supposed to start his first treatment on July the 27th. Paul, our good friend Charlie Dixon had a massive heart attack oh on, on the morning of July 4th and didn't make it. And he had, was going through the process. He had just plugged in. After and he resisting was so, it. After, after resisting, resisting it. He was so excited. He was so happy. And he was supposed to be to, to join us in San Diego for, for That's the reunion. That's right. That's right. But he passed away on the morning of uh, July fourth, and we met. He was a brother, and we 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 wow. miss him. We miss him so. So don't resist. Don't resist. Don't, I mean, there's no reason. Just file. Do put in your intent to file. File for your benefit. And if they need help, if they if they need a little push, they need a little guidance. Where do you go? Come to the coach. Come to the wealth coach. <laughs> you can reach me. Text me. Text Tyrone French 36260. Give me a call. 877-296-5196. You can call me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Shoot me an email. Tyrone at TyroneFrench.com. But download my app, which is the best way to contact me anywhere in the world. Matter of fact, I just got a client that's stationed on Diego Garcia. So text Tyrone French to 36260 and we will get you the benefits and the help that you need and that being said i am tyrone french and we're all about closing the wealth gap that's our show for this week closing the wealth gap the one show the only show that shows you how to take control of your financial future Right here in North County's only community radio station, OCTalkRadio.net.